Let's let's everyone take a deep breath. It's a really nice way to ground yourself. (laughs) So welcome to the Intimacy Hour. It's our interactive Q&A at the Tantra Institute. So please in the chat put where you're from because we like to see where everyone is at. Our global community spans the globe wide and we love our Tantra Institute friends and family. So my name is Lauren Harkness. I'm the co-founder of the Tantra Institute here in New York. And I love, love, love our mission and our work in the world. And I feel so grateful to be a part of the conscious sexuality community where we talk about sex, love, and intimacy and being authentic in your interactions and accessing the deep healing and the deep body wisdom that's available to every single person on this planet. Um, I feel very honored because we're not taught about our sexuality um, and there's no real conversation about how much pleasure the body is capable of. I have yet to hit the ceiling and I'm so grateful for that fact. So we have events and and workshops all over the world and we have 18 facilitators currently. Um, We have events ranging from the PG to the very not PG, and we have a live event called Desire that we've been running small intimate groups of here in New York since the summer, and it's been really lovely to have in-person connection again. So our mission is to be better lovers, and that's not only in the bedroom, but how can you access this deep, authentic connection that is life-giving with everyone in your life, from your friends, to your family, to your partners, to strangers, to, um, you know, the people that you're intimately connected to on a daily basis that may not be close to your heart, but how can you have deep, real conversation and deep, real intimacy with everyone you interact with? I think where I want to talk today on is uh, actually about abundance. So I have a six month class called Sex Witch that I've been um, really, really getting excited for. And our last class, the topic was sex and money. And I realized how intimately they're connected and I, I, we just had the best class. So I wanna talk about that today. Um, and I'll, again, please feel free to put in the chat if you have any questions or any desires um, that you wanna hear about sex, love or intimacy. So when I first became an entrepreneur, it was in 2009 and I was at that time a nanny and a house manager for a family in Seattle and I was um, creating jewelry on the side. And so I had a little side business selling my jewelry at small markets in the Seattle area. And I loved it, I loved it so much. Um, And around 2009, the recession hit and I got laid off partly and I had about $10,000 saved. So my former partner and I decided to move from Seattle to Portland and he was going to art school and I started selling my jewelry at the Saturday market. So this was the largest artisan market in the country and it was July, I think. And so I had a wonderful summer and it felt um, incredible to, to be you know crafting my art and receiving financial exchange for this thing that was just my deep passion. And it was very exciting. And then the fall hit and the winter hit and in portland this was an outdoor market and so the rain started coming and the sales started drying up and i had no business background i have a degree in psychology but i had no business experience really i was learning as i went so i very quickly ran out of my ten thousand dollars very quickly uh there was no there was no money coming in and thank god it was the recession because i went to look for jobs and no one was hiring and I had to figure it out. So the winter was really tough and I didn't know about retail and the seasons of retail and that January is usually slow after the holiday season and then it picks up again in the spring. So I had no idea that my ebb was, wasn't permanent. And so I dealt with a lot of scarcity and a lot of fear that came up as a result. And I spent many, you know, many hours on my floor, like trying to figure out what to do and experiencing, you know, emotional upheaval because I put my heart and soul into this business that I had just started and I ran out of money and there was no money coming in. So what what was I to do? So I started studying um, prosperity mindset material. And one of my favorite books on the topic is called Creating Money by Oren and Daben. 
And it's a great book about how to shift from scarcity consciousness to abundance. And it's not only related to money. And so when I talk about this abundance, it's, it's related to anything. And you may experience twinges of scarcity in your psyche due to how you grew up and how your family talked about money or resources or values. Um, you can have you know, you can experience scarcity around friendships, like feeling jealous or feeling left out. There are many ways that we as just human beings who experience the density of our karmic cycles uh, might feel scarce. And I, I really want to share that that's totally normal and it's a completely normal human experience to have those feelings. And so you're not alone if you feel that way. And I think a lot of people can get stuck uh, when they're going through hard times or going through those ebbs of life when nothing seems to be flowing and feeling like they they don't have any community of support or feelings of belonging in what they're going through. Um, But it's, it's, it's a really normal human experience. And I learned how to transmute and transform those painful emotions around money uh, for me. Um, And I've done it with many different topics in my life. And so I wanted to share a few of the things I learned because it might help you. So this book, this book was great because it started to talk about abundance of all forms and channels of abundance. And the first thing I wanted to share was I had to open up my frame of reference. And the more I fixated on my sales needed to come from jewelry and this business that I put my heart and soul into, the more fixated I became on uh, how attached I was to my business succeeding. And they, the first thing I learned in that book was to open up all channels of abundance, because if you're only paying attention to one, you're basically closing the doors to all other forms of abundance coming in. And so I started to get excited, like if I got a $20 check in the mail or I got a rebate and I started picking up pennies on the ground when I saw them. And I started, um, you know, opening myself to, you know, babysitting jobs or things that were coming in here and there. I started um, getting design projects and people requesting that I support them in their design process. And so soon all of these different avenues of abundance started opening in my life and I made it through winter into spring and then the sales started picking up again. But some of these key things I learned, I think are very helpful. It's like, how can you um, open your mind to all possibilities of abundance? The second thing I wanna share on abundance consciousness, I learned from my former niece, um, my ex-husband's niece is she's just this precious jewel of a girl and one year we were having a birthday party for his mother and she was helping clean up and so she started running around the house and she was picking up all the birthday candles that had been pulled out of the cake she picked up all these candles and had them all in her hand like with the frosting all over and it was adorable and she started going up to people and saying look i'm rich i'm rich And so she would go up to everyone showing them the candles and say, I'm rich, I'm rich. And she thought it was so funny. And we all thought it was so funny too. And later when I got home, I was like, I think I just learned something very important from a five-year-old about abundance thinking and that you can be rich, uh, rich in spirit. You can be rich in friendships. You can be rich in community. You can be rich with, you know, birthday candles and the more you feel rich, the more that richness is reflected back to you with the things that come into your life and the people that come into your life. And so I share that that story with my students and my clients a lot because at that right after that is when I started picking up the pennies on the ground, you know, because I would just walk by them normally. But I started picking up pennies and saying, I'm rich, like this abundance is here for me now. And soon enough i started finding you know quarters and and like the money started to come because i felt rich because i felt abundant and so that's the third thing i want to share is that you know as above so below it's one of the great magicians sayings you know as within so without as above so below and what you feel inside is often what you see reflected back at you from 
people uh, from life, from the universe. And so if you feel abundant, your abundance will be reflected back at you. If you're feeling tight and scared and pinched and fearful, which again is a normal human experience that we all feel from time to time. But if you dwell there, often what you're going to receive back is that same energy, that same energy of not enough. So it's helpful to use your attention as a resource because your attention is one of your most valuable assets. If you're paying attention to how little you have, that attention is going to replicate. You're going to multiply that attention. You're going to multiply the feeling of not enough. If you pay attention to how wealthy you are in life in all its forms, your attention is going to multiply that thing and you're going to feel like you have more than enough. And it's a really powerful way to be conscious and to be a conscious co-creator with life. So using that phrase, I'm rich, I'm rich, like welcoming and paying attention to all the abundance that is already here for you. It's already in your life. It's already inside of you. In any given moment, you have access to close your eyes, to tune in, to feel this flush of warmth in your body that you can self-generate. And that comes from inside of you. If you pay attention to that, you're going to get more of that, more of that result in your life. The next thing I'd like to share about abundance is giving. And especially when you feel the most scarce, that is the best time to give. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite mentors once said to me, you can afford to be generous. You have enough to share. If it's a smile walking down the street, if it's a loving gesture, if it's a thoughtful question to someone you can tell is in need, you have more than enough to be generous. And it doesn't matter if it's money or if it's your time or if it's your companionship or if it's your attention or if it's your presence. So one of the games I like to play with my students that I just gave them, and it's so much fun because this is what I did. I did this when I was completely out of money. I started hiding dollar bills on my street in Portland, right around where I lived, like Easter eggs. And I would think about people finding this money and get so joyous in my heart thinking about their joy, finding a a random dollar tucked into a planter on the side of the street or like tucked into a fence post. And I started hiding money. And anytime I felt really bad and I felt terrible about my financial situation, I gave. I went and hid money for people to find. And it was so much fun. And I've done that several times over now. And here in New York, I did it with my partner's children last summer. And we hid money. And if you want to really feel the wild, joyous abundance of giving, do this exercise with kids and see how much fun they have, like sneaking dollars everywhere for people to find and like watching, you know, like waiting and watching to see who picks up the dollar and what their expression is. So that feeling of generosity also makes you wealthy in your heart. And um, even in my coaching program, when I took my coaching program, they would say, if you're feeling emotional or out of sorts, uh, give back like go pour your attention out on other people. And it's one of the best ways to soothe yourself and to soothe your, soothe your nervous system and to stop in the mental spin where you may be. So <clears throat> the other thing I wanna share about abundance is to be very focused and specific. You can manifest And even if you have a full-time job and you have a normal, regular paycheck, you can start to manifest and create more abundance in your life. Again, whether it's with money or with people or friendships, um, putting your attention on your finances is a really powerful way to, to be in right relationship with your money. So having your checking account up instead of avoiding looking at the, at the dollars in your bank account, like make, sh- make it a daily practice to check your finances and to see what's going in and what's coming out. Um, and one of my great mentors on the subject of abundance would give us the exercise to save, 
spend and invest. And when, when I got that trifecta, I recognized how I'm really great at generating money. I'm really great at spending money, but I had a hard time holding money. So I would make it and I would spend it, but it would, you know, it would, it would empty very quickly. And I recognized later as I was doing my work on abundance consciousness that I had a resistance to holding and saving because of some things I saw in my family. And so I was kind of rejecting that. I was, I was rejecting it before it could reject me. And so this pandemic has been a real eye opener for me as many people. I think um, my business went from really flush to totally zero all at once in one fell swoop because I was used to working privately with clients in person or doing in-person classes. So it took me several months to get my feet under myself again. And it was a reminder of all of those abundance mindset consciousness pieces that I needed to learn way back in the beginning with my jewelry business, having to do that again during the pandemic. Like it was such a beautiful touchstone to go back to those places that I had already learned before that would help me get my feet under my myself again. So it's, it's really in your control as much as financial abundance. And sometimes if you struggle with other forms of scarcity, as much as that feels out of your control, a lot of the time, it actually is in your control. It's in your control to be um, an energetic match for the frequency. And you may feel like, Oh, I'm tired of people saying, you know, the, you know, the, 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 what is it? The secret, like, you have to be inside what you want to match. But it, I found that to be so ultimately true that if you want to change anything outside of yourself, change your inner belief system, change your inner relationship with it, and what is reflected outside of you will then be a match. And when I do manifesting meditations with my students and my clients, we basically make ourselves into the feeling of what we want to create. So if you want to feel abundant, you want the felt sense in your body to be of abundance and doing some of those exercises I shared is a really nice way to get into the feeling of being in abundance. And when you get into the feeling of being in abundance, often the feeling of abundance comes to match you and comes to greet you. So I think that's where I'd like to end the lecture portion today. And I'd love to open it up for any questions. And this could be any questions on abundance or sex, love, and intimacy, any questions at all. Um, you can either type this into the chat. You can come off of mute. If you'd like to speak, please go down to the reactions button on Zoom and select raise hand, and then I will call on you. Great. Bengat, hi. Hey, Lauren. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, um, it's an amazing topic. Uh, it was just coming at the right time. I was Absolutely. looking for it and it came. And uh, the book you mentioned, can you just mention it again? The name yes. of the book? Yes, it's called Creating Money by Oren and Daben. O-R-I-N and D-A-B-E-N. Okay. Yep. Okay. Leslie also just mentioned another one, Secrets to a Millionaire Mind. I haven't read that one. Mm. Uh -huh, but I'm going to get it. And then there's also another one that I like um, that came out in the 30s, and it's called The Game of Life and How to Play It by Florence Scovel Shin. That's a really wonderful abundance mindset book as well. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, Leslie. Hi. Or Leslie and Bryce. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Oh, it's me. I actually have the question. Awesome. Um, I love this topic. Uh, money has always been an area that I struggle with a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing that I would share is um, the times where I have felt, you know, the most scarcity and that I've actually given have been the times where um, it, you know, one, one example, I had just lost my job. And I was at my last paycheck and one of my friends had posted one of those GoFundMes because his wife um, was, uh, was dying from cancer and, mm. you know, mm. needing funds. 
And I took like the last 50 bucks that I had and, uh, and I sent it to them and I was like, you know what? I feel good because I know that this is, you know, temporary and that I rather, you know, do something good with the money that I have. And literally the next week I got a new job and was making money again. And I was like, that's not a coincidence. A hundred percent. I I agree with you completely. Every time I've done that, some windfall has come in too. And it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a twist of the mind for so many people to think of giving when you feel like you don't have enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, I mean, it, it even like reminds me of the, the movie, um, what is that movie? The Christmas movie. Uh, it's a beautiful life. Oh yes. Oh, I love that movie so much. That is such an amazing example of abundance at the end of the movie, you know, where it's like, they have nothing, but like they recognize everything that, you know, um, the main character had did for them to help them build their homes and to yeah. have things that they have. So, yeah, I think, um, I think that's a really great, great topic. And, and, and I absolutely love this. Um, so uh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing. Well, um, till uh, this mid year, January mid year, I was putting so much attention on my promotion, mm -hmm. uh, thinking I will get it and I'll get more money. Right. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I was attracting the lack of it, as you rightly said. And I did, I was not given promotion. It's okay. It's for a good reason. But at the same time, just one week before, I was attracting it, but I think some part of it, I'm going to get more money. That's what ah. possibly I'm feeling. So I was given a 5,000 as an interim bonus. I was like, ah. okay, thank you so much. And I was like, I was in that gratitude mode for quite some time and that actually since my boss felt that uh, you know uh, we couldn't give him promotion maybe we should do something else so he worked on it and I was able to get 10% more salary what I was getting so that's an amazing one and now that's Beautiful. where I felt okay maybe I should just focus only on what I'm getting and abundance and that actually flows much more so it's I know it, I've learned about this quite a number of times I think until otherwise you practice, I think it's, it's a challenge. It is. It is. That's a beautiful story. And congratulations. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Our attention is our greatest currency. I really believe that to be true. Um, I'll share a story also. Uh, I think that there's also a way that abundance flows when you're making an investment in yourself that's in alignment with your higher self or when you're making choices that are moving your life forward, that abundance will meet you there. Uh, so uh, the first, let's see, I was 27 and I started studying with my first ever personal growth teacher. And I was at work one day and I picked up this book because my friend had given it to me and I called the, the school and I asked about the program. I, I, I they answered all my questions. Um, and then I went back to work the next day and I got a surprise raise and a bonus, just a random raise and a bonus out of the blue. And there was a sign there. So I said, okay, I hear you universe. Like I'm supposed to go do that program. And so I called the school right back and I signed up because I felt like I was being met with confirmation by just showing up one day and getting a raise and a bonus the day after I you know, called the school to inquire about their program. So I think that abundance flows when you're doing the right thing or you're following your path. And I, I truly believe that you're rewarded with abundance. Let's see, Amir asks, what about the relationship between trust and abundance? I love that question. I just did a medicine journey last week and I did ayahuasca and the whole topic was on these two because the shaman at the beginning of the night said this perfect cone for me. She said, the divine feminine is connected to the mother earth and the divine masculine is connected to spirit and to the sky. And the divine feminine is about trust and abundance. And when she said that, I have a very good relationship with abundance, but trust on the other hand, I, I said, I must have made a mistake. I thought my lack of trust was about the masculine 
but I didn't realize it was a misalignment with my own inner feminine. And so that the whole night was about recognizing where I had mistrust and how that was actually that it came from my my the lineage in my maternal line. I have there were Holocaust survivors, my grandmother, my great grandmother, and I often feel this kind of sense of anxiety or that something is coming for me or that I'm not safe or that I can't, that I'm going to get in trouble. Those are kind of themes that I've grown up with. And I went and sat down by the river um, as I started to drop in. And that was the feeling. I was kind of communing with bliss and nature. And then I would feel this like shock or this fright, like is something coming for me? And I made that connection between my grandmother's experience of, you know, being arrested by the Gestapo and, you know, the, the feeling of not safe in their body. And so then the whole journey was about that, like regrounding into Mother Earth, like recognizing any time I felt scared that I could just put my root down, my this anchor, this taproot that's in my body that's connected to the divine feminine, it's connected to Mother Earth and to soften that I could soften and allow myself to feel safe. And it took the whole night <laughs> of quite a number of challenging moments to recognize that that this habit that I had wasn't necessarily founded, that sure, I've experienced things that weren't safe in my life or had traumatic experiences like we all have, but the foundation that I sit upon is solid. You know, I was sitting on the dirt. I was sitting on the ground right by the river. Like there was a ground underneath me. And that's a metaphor, I think, for all of us who have experienced our own versions of trauma in our life where our nervous system doesn't feel safe. And a lot of times when we're re-triggered, it's a habit. It's a habit of nervous system response that's not necessarily founded in that moment in reality. So I think you're right about trust and abundance, that they go hand in hand. Because if you think about Mother Earth, Mother Earth is fertile and wild and uh, regenerative and even death is a part of life in nature. You know, I, I found a beautiful dead hawk on the side of the road on my way up to the journey. And that hawk was talking to me during the journey and saying things like your, your miscarriages that you've had, they're just as beautiful as a birth, you know, just my death is just as beautiful as life. And so Mother Earth is always regenerating, even if there's a forest fire or a pandemic, you know, there's that destruction is just as important in the creative life cycle as life. And I think that when we can trust that there is ebb and flow in abundance, just like I had to learn in my jewelry business, you know, there would be times of flow where there, I was making a lot of money and then there would be ebbs. And the more I had saved, the more I could ride the ebbs. I could just wait and be and rest and relax and regenerate in those times when there wasn't a lot coming in. Just like in the winter, you know, bears hibernate. We're meant to be more internal when the weather's not as nice out. And there is a natural flow of, you know, harvest and decay that's a part of life. And I think that that trusting the cycle is what helps us trust that abundance is always coming, even if and and if if in that moment you feel the pain of scarcity, that there is abundance on the other side of that always. Thank you for that question. Are there any other questions, comments, anything you want to touch on tonight? Yeah, Sophia. Hi. Hi. Uh, it's 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 not a question, and it's um, it's not really a comment. Um, you have a way of saying things that are always just inevitably so pertinent to what I'm going through, or went through, or feel, or I'm thinking about. And you know, as you're talking, I have so many thoughts running through my head. It, I don't want to share anything here right now, but I, I just want to say that, you know, every time I come here and I, and I hear you speak, you have this 
remarkable way of being so um, trusting in, in your like, the way that you share things that are so personal mm. and it um I don't know it's it's like it's like inspiring like it makes I don't know it just makes me feel somehow lighter or filled with like a light mm. and um and that makes all of these thoughts that I need to process come with such such more intensity and clarity and um I just, I don't know, I like really feel you right now. And I wanted to say, you know, thank you for just your, um, your generosity of spirit and that you bring to these. Um, Thanks, Sophia. That makes me melt. I really appreciate that. And I'm so glad that what I share touches you so deeply and that it affects you in such a beautiful way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I have a very wonderful energy teacher. Um, her name is Linda, and she talks about broadbanding a lot. Um, or, and then another thing she talks about is hollow boning, where you basically open yourself up to channel whatever your higher self wants to share. And so I try and do those two things where I'm, I'm asking to hear the words that are going to be for someone, you know, and then I try to speak in a really broad range so that you hear exactly what you need to hear or that the thing that is meant for you reaches you and that everything else kind of just falls away. So thank you. Hey, Lauren. Um, so I guess I, I have a question. Um, I've been basically dealing with scarcity for the past nine months now with my job. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm just trying to think here of how can I try to incorporate um, abundance into trying to turn that around? Oh, that's a great question. Can you give me a little more details? Like, how are you feeling the scarcity in your job? I just want a job because I've literally been hurting financially. Um, I see. Yeah, I've been, I've been um watching as as you know despite me trying to cut back despite unemployment coming in i've just been watching every month um my bank account just slowly bleeding mm -hmm. <laughs> and i mean i guess i just have, as you said you know in the times that we go through where just, no, nothing just seems to be going right. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I've been just, you know, looking at the situation, looking at every single failed job attempt and uh, <laughs> looking at it and going, where is this abundance? Ah, what a beautiful question. Thank you for asking it. <clears throat> well, what I think I want to share with you is there's a beautiful relationship between giving and taking or giving and receiving. Um, and that, that way that I kind of turned around my, my thought or my feeling of abundance by hiding the dollar bills everywhere was basically me adding flow into the giving and receiving cycle of life. And sometimes when we're stuck in scarcity, we're fixated on what we don't have, which then brings us more of what we don't have. Or we're fixated on what we need. So what we need to receive and what's missing is the complete cycle that's gonna generate flow in all directions. So what came to mind when you were asking your question was, what if you focused on what you have to offer each of these potential jobs, like my gift in this dynamic would be that I, I am a diligent hard worker. I'm very focused on details, whatever it is that your particular medicine is, whatever it is that you're good at, you know, mine, I'm not good at focusing on details. I'm really good at bringing fun and joy and, you know, exuberance to a, a situation. But when you think about this is myself is a gift, myself is an offering in this situation, then you're giving 
and the flow can start again. I learned something similar in my jewelry business uh, because I would get stuck on numbers a lot. And then I was studying with this mentor, a business mentor, and she said, the best self-promotion is to radiate and state the facts. And she would often talk about your entrepreneurial gift or is an offering and what comes back, the financial exchange comes back is just meeting that gift. It's just a match for the gift. So what if you went into each of the interviews thinking I'm giving in this situation, I don't need here. You know, what if my presence enough is just to smile at this person on the other side of the table. And if I don't get the job, that's cool. Like if you don't need anything from the situation and you're giving to it, I bet you anything, you're going to get a more positive response back and maybe a job offer or two or three or four. So let me understand this or try to understand this. So you think that I should focus on my abundance and what I can provide. For yes, the job. absolutely. That, that is, that is where I have abundance. Yes, it is. Okay. Yeah, and then see, and see if that changes the responses you're getting in your interviews. Well, it's 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 not the interviews necessarily. Um, it's literally I've had jobs where I've applied and they've told me, "Yes, we want to hire you." And then at the very last minute, just when I think that I have the job, they say, "Nope, we changed our mind." Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Huh. Well, maybe this will help resolve the situation is to just keep focusing on what you're giving. Abundance through what I can give. I can, I can change yep. my thought process and hopefully that might yield better results. I, I hope you. so. Yeah. I'm wishing you the best job opportunity that just comes of knocking on your door. I really hope so. I'll, Me too. I'll, uh, when I get the job, you'll be one of the first people to know. Okay, good. I can't wait. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Sophia, I saw your hand up. Did I? No? Yeah, yeah, I think. Yes, so. okay. okay. Uh, I was just thinking of something that um, what Michael said really reminded me because I've, I've kind of been in like your shoes before where you know everything like sort of went really great and you're looking forward to starting in this place and then like they just kind of like disappear and you know for no reason and um I uh I used to I used to work with kids doing like different kinds of development and stuff and um the last family that um those kids I worked with the parents had this really remarkable um thing that I I kind of I noticed and I sort of picked up and started incorporating into my life. They had like, anytime they came across and someone was like telling them their story of like, oh, like a you know, their neighbor came downstairs, like, hey, yeah, we're going on vacation, whatever. Their response to like everyone they came across was always, oh, great, can I help? Huh. And to me, that was like so weird because they would ask that not only of like friends and family or like me or something, but they would ask it of like strangers, like people that they hardly knew. Someone was telling them something that they're doing or their story and their, their response was like, cool can I help and it, like even, even like I remember the neighbor was like oh no it's good and they're like no really like anything even like watering your plants while you're away like is there anything I can do to help and to me that was like initially very strange because I come from a very insular family Lauren I think mm -hmm. I come from pretty similar backgrounds and, and you might be able to relate to this but my family was always like we don't know you and we don't know what you can do to us we'll be nice to you but this is the fence between us. And mm. when I started, but I fell in love with this kind of like sense of just being ready to like help and like give. And, you know, a lot of people, when they say like give, you have these like lofty ideas of like, oh, if it's a fundraiser, I have to give a lot of money. If I, if I don't have a lot of money to give, I'm not making a difference. You know, if mm -hmm. I don't have like everything to give, then nothing I'm doing is worthwhile. But here are these people asking like, can I help in just like the simple way of like, watering your plants while you're away on vacation and that's like requires no money you're not looking to get anything back you're not in an interview these are just like people who live upstairs from you and yep. but when I picked up on that and started like I found myself asking that question of people more and more when they would tell me their stories and I would just say like oh cool like is there anything I can do to help and sometimes people would say yes and it just felt like such an amazing and validating thing to know that there's something that I can like do and offer 
and there's no there's no like financial because I've always struggled with like financial exchanges and valuing like mm -hmm. places value my time and what I'm doing and what service I'm offering this is a thing that has like no financial kind of dirtiness to, to sully it yeah. and it's no pressure it is just like what you're giving with sort of your time and your love and your attention and I found that when I started incorporating more of that um, I started just looking at myself differently and that translated into how I negotiated for myself um, with like like future clients and stuff like that so That's I don't know so that would be helpful to you in any way but it's it's certainly been like a helpful perspective for me that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I hope that touches you, Michael. Yes, it, I do find too that the more I give, the more you have this feeling of abundance, the more you recognize how much you have to offer and how much you can share and how, um, you know, how, how full your cup is. Because it's easy to get lost in what you don't have, but it's really special to, to feel that you have abundance and that you have enough to give and that you could help someone and, and even doing anonymous acts of good, like cleaning up the bathroom stall before you leave. You know, it's a small gesture, but it, the ripple effects like really add up. Yeah. Thank you. Leslie, you guys will be our last share. Oh, cool. Um, so I had one comment and mm -hmm. I had a completely unrelated question, if I could ask that. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. Uh, I guess my first comment and, uh, and Michael, thank you for sharing that, um, is, you know, the moments where I have been like the lowest and in my most recent, mm -hmm. uh, I started a financial, uh, business, um, during this pandemic, working a hundred percent on commission. Wow. <laughs> and it's been tough. That's and brave. Thank you. One moment, I remember this like yesterday where I woke myself up at five o'clock in the morning, like, oh my God, I only have a couple of hundred bucks in my checking account. How am I going to survive? And I was like in a total panic, like everything. So you know what I did? I, uh, I went in front of my TV, I exercised and I watched like a meditation manifestation about money and abundance. Mm -hmm. and nothing changed. My bank account didn't change. Like no one like, you know, came and gave me thousands of dollars. But that day I used what I had left and I invested more in my business. And, uh, you know, now I'm doing so much more better. So it's like those moments when we're like the, you know, the scarces and the super scariest, when we think that that's the worst thing we can do is invest those are usually the best times to like to do the thing that will like transform your life. It's so true. It's so true. Thank you for saying that. And yeah, when you, uh, when you make a change outside of normal pattern behavior, and then that's the opportunity when you can get a different result. Whereas if you just held on to those $200, like totally scared that no more was coming, you're in the feeling of no more is coming, you know, but if you pay attention on I'm investing in myself, like there's an investment, there's a return on investment always, then you get to feel that abundance. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I hope you know, that was helpful for you, Michael. Um, and then my unrelated question is regarding uh, desire. So yes. Um, I have noticed that since attending Friday night's event, uh, I had been feeling so raw, like leaving. I literally felt like I had a hangover. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's normal. And mm -hmm. then yesterday I was like bursting into tears, like just feeling really raw and, and emotional. And I was wondering if that's something related. <laughs> yes, that's a really good question. And it, <clears throat> touching on many people's experience in, in uh, basically when you go into ceremonial space or you're in expanded space, you're in an expansion, you actually can't sustain that expanded state without coming back. And like there's a contraction after every expansion. And so what you're describing is totally normal you know, after big ceremony, after a peak experience, you know, after going on vacation, when you come home, like it's often, mm -hmm. there's like a dip in your feelings and that's totally normal, 100% normal. Now we also were in, you know, sexual energy because desire is all about following the impulse in your body. And that event is very charged and there's more, you know, more than just you there. 
So we're in a group experience. There's group energy that's exchanged. And even if you're not interacting with everyone, you're feeling our bodies are like little animals. So we feel each other and you might be picking up things that aren't yours. So that's, um, it's a good thing to take salt baths. It's a good thing to rest. It's a good thing to eat grounding foods like root vegetables and to drink lots of water and to journal and to do anything cleansing. Like even a cold plunge is a good cleanse of it basically rings your body out, changes your nervous system state from stress to parasympathetic. So you could get nice and hot in the shower and then just turn the water on cold and let your body flush. Okay that can help. Um, and the sexual energy, our Kundalini runs through our chakras. So it goes through all of the energetic centers in your body that correlate to different parts of your life. And if you get a big shot of sexual energy into your heart where you may have wounds from the past, mm -hmm. it can flush up those painful p feelings that are ready to actually, it's like a cleansing response. You know, when you do ayahuasca and you purge, it's actually getting well. It's, it's a little counterintuitive because you're throwing up, but you're actually cleansing yourself. And so those emotional cleanses are just as important. So you can celebrate like, yay, like we had a beautiful night together. Like we had so much love and mm -hmm. sensuality and like depth and human connection. And now I'm feeling like the old tears that I never got to cry that get to come out now. And on the other side, there's more space for love yeah wow. that's beautiful thank you yeah you're welcome enjoy it thank you yeah thank you so much then get is yours a quickie i'll make it quickie okay thank you <laughs> i resonate what sophia what she's talked about um yesterday thanks laura and i was also at the medicine uh journey ah oh, you were yeah amazing and it was amazing. Uh, it's not ayahuasca, I think something else. Uh -huh. But one question I asked one of my uh, partner was that, how can I be of help? Yes. That's all I asked the question. I mean, the healing that happened right after that was amazing for both of us. Um, so I think that's a real thing that I'm going to take it. It's a reiterating, Sophia, thank you. What I observed yesterday uh, what i need to incorporate Thank yes you. oh that's so beautiful thank you for that reminder and you know it's always best if you're giving not to get you know but that that service it always brings back so much reward in your life when you from your genuine heart want to share your your gifts yeah thank you Ah, thank you so much, everyone. What a beautiful intimacy hour. I love it. I love it so much. I always love coming on. I get nervous because lecturing is, you know, sometimes when I just open up the channel and it comes out, that's great. But sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm going to talk for 20 minutes with no interaction. Great. <laughs> so I'm really thankful to be here with you. And um, Please feel free to join again. You can see all of our events at tantraNY.com. We have many. Uh, next weekend, I think we have both of our previews for our next eight-week class. Uh, mine is called Erotic Sovereignty, and guys is called Masculine Rising. You can find all of that at tantraNY.com. So have a beautiful evening. Let's unmute everyone so you can you can go ahead and unmute yourselves if you'd like to say goodbye. Bye, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you. Thank you.